Hi, Dr. Kevin Windish from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine. Again, welcome to our video series for students. For a little more variety, you get to look at student number one instead of my face, which you see on all those other videos, and I'm sure you're tired of looking at. Today, what we want to talk about is the differential diagnosis of vomiting. And it is a lengthy one. It is a complicated one. Uh, please remember that these videos don't replace visits to your physician's office. And these are really tailored towards medical students, PA students, NP students, residents, etc. If we can be of assistance here, or if you'd like to schedule a rotation with us, give us a call at area code 775-359-7111. I'm a professor at most universities in the area. And if you're not from a university in the area, that's pretty easy to fix. So, differential diagnosis of vomiting. It's lengthy, it's complicated, and most of the time it's gastroenteritis. But because most of the time it's gastroenteritis, it's really easy to miss something bad. So realistically, when I was a resident, the thing I like to see least on my list of patients that I'm going to see is the kid with the chief complaint of vomiting. Because the list of things it could be is huge many of them bad, realizing that most of the time it's just AGE and easy enough to treat. Worst case scenario, you give them some IV fluid. But you have to think outside the box. If you get trapped into linear thinking, you're going to miss stuff, you're going to hurt a patient. So, student number one, what are some things that I might need to consider? Uh, let's see. I'm going to kind of categorize them because I think okay. that might be easiest. In terms of infectious disorders, you got to think Ray syndrome. Ray syndrome? Ray okay. syndrome. Uh, you can be looking at an abscess in the brain. Okay. Maybe, uh, labyrinthitis. Okay. Some kind of meningitis. Okay. It can be pancreatitis, hepatitis. Uh, it can be some kind of neoplastic disorder. Okay. Including, but not limited to, uh, tumors in the brain, especially if the vomiting occurs more often at night. Having said that, I can't tell you how many patients present with vomiting at night when they're lying supine that don't have brain tumors. And of all the brain tumors I've seen, I've actually never seen somebody who presented with that. Now, if I went and asked a neurosurgeon, they'd tell me about hundreds of patients who vomit at night with brain tumors. But the brain tumors that I've cared for to date the patients with brain tumors that I've cared for to date were not vomiting at night, and I've had lots of patients who vomit at night who do not have brain tumors. So just keep that in mind. But you got to look. Okay, what else? Also things like perineoplastic syndrome. Okay. Uh, you can be looking at Crohn's disease. Okay. And in particular, gastroduodenal Crohn's, which can be isolated to the stomach and the duodenum, presents with just belly pain and vomiting, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Many times, not always. You could be looking at a food allergy. Okay. An allergic gastritis. Okay. Uh, let's see. And a lot, among food allergies, there's also a really unusual allergy of sorts, goes by its own name, that can do this. Okay. Anything coming to mind? One particular food. It's kind of a, re a hot button topic. Are you talking about honey? No. Nope. Or... Student number two in the background, if you have any ideas, e. feel free to speak up. What? E. coli. Well, we're talking about allergies here. Oh, I'm sorry. An allergy. Okay. allergy that causes. How about celiac disease? Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Which technically is a gluten insensitivity, uh, but a lot of people think of it as an allergic process. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay, what else? You can have, like, Hirschsprung disease. Okay. So now we're starting to get into some anatomic issues. Mm -hmm. Hirschsprung's disease with toxic megacolon, absolutely, and that is a surgical emergency. What else? Pyloric stenosis. Which is a definite surgical emergency. Those patients will dehydrate and go into shock on you. What else? You can have PUD. Okay, peptic ulcer disease. disease. Mm -hmm. Okay. Intussusception. Okay. Which is definitely not uncommon. An indirect inguinal hernia. That's incarcerated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Appendicitis. Okay. A volvulus. Okay. You can be looking at GERD. 
okay, which is very, very common, especially in the neonates. 100% of neonates vomit or spit up, but not all of them have true GERD. To that end, among neonates throwing up, what's the most common reason neonates throw up? Or spit up? What's the most common reason? Yeah, if there's, a, if there's, most of the time it's just happening, but if there's a reason, if there's a specific cause, what's the most common cause? I mean, you could be looking at the fact that the baby's lying down. That, that definitely <laughs> adds to it. Student number two. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, overfeeding. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. What else? Can we be looking at esophagitis? Okay. A uh, foreign body. Okay. Somewhere or basor, mm -hmm. which is sort of a foreign body. Yeah. Accumulation of small foreign bodies mm -hmm. over time. Uh, let's see. I've said there was a gallbladder disease. Okay. You could be seeing. Any kind of concussion or post-concussion syndromes? Okay. We can be looking at some kind of renal failure. Okay. Let's stay with cerebral diseases for a second. What are some other some other cerebral diseases? Let's see if I have some more here. I think that that's the only ones that I have on here. Um, migraine headaches? Bingo. Okay, mm -hmm. migraines into a point cluster headaches. And occasionally tension headaches too, but migraines in particular. Okay, remember the common, uh, or not so common, but definitely not unheard of, uh, unusual disease migraine equivalent or acephalgic migraine, which presents just with vomiting. Here's Julie. Oh. Uh, Uh, also, cyclic vomiting, irritable bowel syndrome. What else? So, should I go back to the renal? Mm -hmm. So, renal disease. So, said the renal failure, the pyelonephritis. Okay. I'm looking at kidney stones. Okay. Uh, in terms of metabolic disorders, you can be seeing diabetic ketoacidosis. Okay, or anything that's making you acidotic or ketotic. Yeah. So again, that could go into pulmonary as well. You could be looking at bulimia. Okay. Um, pregnancy. Okay. Factitious disorder. Mm -hmm. Any kind of increased intracranial pressure. Okay. So uh, pseudotumor cerebri. Mm -hmm. You'd be looking at some kind of drug overdose, such as aspirins, uh, iron. Motrin. Motrin, mm-hmm. Tylenol, especially before the liver shuts down. Or alcohol as well. Absolutely. Um, mushrooms can cause it. And cannabis can also cause it. Okay. Lead. Okay. I have a and lot mercury. Of these. And ecstasy and all the other drugs. Not a good thing to have drugs in kids. Um, any kind of intoxication, really. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Okay, any other major categories we've yeah. not covered? Streptococcal pharyngitis. Okay, and otitis media. Very common. So you've got to look in the ears when a kid comes in throwing up. And stress is a common cause as well. Absolutely. We've all done that. I think that those are all the major categories. Yeah, that I, have I think here. that's a pretty good differential for now. So, again, my point simply is it's not always so simple. Even though it's a simple complaint in the parents' eyes, and I don't know why they're making the big deal out of this. I've seen more than one type 1 diabetic missed because everybody had AGE on the brain. So this is Dr. Windish. If we can be of assistance to you in your training, give us a call at our office, 775-359-7111. Thank you to students number one and number two.